Did you see that limited run games released an NES game? It's a standalone version of Golf from Golf Story, and it was limited to 1,500 copies. Has an extraverse mode as well. What oh. are your thoughts on a game like this being released this day and age? Um, obviously, there's a market for it because it sold out in two minutes. Yeah. Uh, my, my, my birdies tell me. So, um, this is an interesting... I mean, Limited Run has been doing this the, the third year anniversary of Limited Run. Coming up, it's only been three years, which is kind of amazing when you think about it. They've grown leaps and bounds. They have tons of releases every month now. So, Golf Story, which I still... Can I get a physical physical copy of that still? Or is that... I believe so. I believe it's... Is that on their website? I believe it's up for pre-order until this Friday. I hope Thanks so. Thanks for telling me. I, I, I need to get it. Yes, because uh, I yeah. want to play Golf Story because I like golf games. I like golf games going back to the EA, you know, ones in the PC ones. I used to play those freaking games. I like golf games. So I meant to so, pick it up. So, I so hope golf you story got it is, is is a there's a story mode, right? It's like RPG elements. It's cute. You walk around. So so Ian likes golf story. Yes, yeah, so you can still pre-order it. So they did a they did an NES style golf game, mini game inside of golf story. Yes, called golf, right? Yes. So it was poured over into an actual NES game, and Limited Run decided to do a, a limited. Making up for past ones. All right. Limited Run decided decided to release this. They did 1,500 copies. They did uh, 1,050 were green and 450 were golf ball white. They got a box. I'm not sure if there's is there a manual or just a game. Uh, either way, they sold out incredibly, incredibly quickly. They sold these out, and people were pissed. Here's the deal, though. In in the pantheon of NES homebrew games or any game made after '95. As far as I know, none, none have been even close to the success of this. Going back to like Battle Kid and like the Haunted games, none have sold this amount, at least this quickly. So I, I'm going to stick up for Linden Runs. There's no way they could have known that this would have sold as well. Now, if they came to me and asked, could we have made more? I probably would have said, you probably could have sold more. But from their perspective, they probably were hedging their bets a bit on these. So they probably could have easily sold 3,000 or 4,000 of these. The problem is, though, when companies like I Am 8-Bit shit the bed with their Mega Man 2 and Mega Man X re-releases and don't sell as well as you think, it's hard to gauge these markets, at least to me. So I think there though is a market, though, in these games where I don't think the market's totally there now in these new games, like making a new NES game, there's not a huge market there. Because, like, who cares? It's a new random ass game you made. Those games have never sold well. The most of those games usually sell, besides the haunted games, which which have sold more to the other ones because they go to conventions and people know about them, their quality. Right. Most of the homebrews don't sell more than a couple hundred, a few hundred. They don't. They just don't. There's no market there. Right. This knows Depends. a market of a new modern game that's on the Switch. People like it. So, this could potentially sell better, but you can't put the full game. So, you crunch down a limited, limited version of it. So I think this is going to be a new market that emerges where you have a new release and you do some sort of demake or bastardized version or something that ties into the, the, the modern game into like a Super Nintendo game or a Genesis game or an NES game and that'll probably sell well in the future. Because now it's not just a playable game, it's now tied to this game that's super popular so there's a built-in audience. Boom. That Really? Is that it? I'm on a lot. You're not going to add anything to that. I uh, know. I mean, I, I, uh, I mean, I think it's excellent. That they did it. They definitely could have sold three thousand. I think most things limited run can probably at this point be guaranteed to. Um, oh, there was a manual in here in dust sleeve. They did a dust sleeve, which is adorable. I, I think most. I, I want to say most things limited run. You can pretty much guarantee would sell um, out that quick, especially something like Golf Story. But you can't. I understand why they did it at one thousand five hundred. You can't take that risk. You can't. You can't, you can't take that risk. Now, could they do another print run? They probably could. They, they could, really but I don't think that's really in the nature. That's on, that's on their business model. To no, do that's that. not. And I mean... Programmed by Thomas Gwinan of Spoonie Bar Productions and the cartridge shells and boards are from Infinite NES Lives. So they'll be good. They'll, it'll be a good quality cartridge. Um, yeah, so no, I can't blame them and I, I don't... I don't it, it sucks if you couldn't get one, but I don't blame them for not doing more than that. This is how they do their business i like the fact that with all of the switch games you get a two-week pre-order anyone who wants the actual game you get it with something as cool as this they can't take the risk on it you got the chance it's well, great they, that it sold as fast as it did they do have that built-in scalper and collector market so you know they run, they run the risk of that if it's not uh, limited those people won't buy it potentially well it 
it, you never know. I mean, every yeah. limit, every limited run release. <laughs> God damn it! Well, I knew that. Like for example, the that the night trap one was going to do game busters. Like that was a no brainer. Well, everyone did. Yeah. Um, but not every release sells out. Sure. I think some people think that every release they sells don't. out. Not every release sells out. Even ones that you know some people might. I mean, arm, armchair people like us might be like, oh, that one's easily going to sell it. It doesn't always. So they have to... Um, hedge their bets. They have to hedge their bets. And it's a shame. Uh, I, I don't need one of those, but hell, could I, I have gotten one? one? I would have taken one. A two-player versus mode? That'd be cool for, for golf. But uh, I'm just happy that, at the very wow. least, I can get the physical copies of Switch games with a pre-order. Yeah, I, I want to get... If this That's, is still available, it is. I will it is. Get, I just okay. checked. Okay. So, anyways, and so maybe there's a couple extra copies, overrun copies laying around. That listen to you beg on the podcast. Maybe. Jesus Christ! I did see the problem with this stuff is that I don't I don't keep track of a lot of stuff. So a lot of times it's like, oh, it's for sale and it's done. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Anyways, it is one of the cooler All right. um, special All right. editions. I'm looking forward to limited run doing future versions of these potentially. We'll see what's down the pipe.